told us this parable before us as Christians. We are the light of the world. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Hello viewers, nice to have you join us today on the program, The Parables, brought to you from the Anglican Cable Network, Nigeria, ACNN. My name is Unzubechi Frank, and today we'll be looking at the parable of the lamp under a basket from four different passages of the Bible. We have Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16, and Mark chapter 4, verse 21 to 25, Luke 8, 16 to 18, and Luke 11, 33 to 34. And I want to mention that this particular parable has to do with how truth and light must shine and set us free from evil and darkness. And here in the studio with me to give a clear exposition on this particular parable is Brother James Mwaboke. He is the leader Abuja Missionary Society, AMS. All Saints Anglican Church who says on five here in Abuja. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much. The pleasure is mine. All right. So, uh, like I said, this particular parable has four places in the Bible that we're going to look at. But then there are three points that we're going to look at, like three different points. So let us move to Matthew chapter 5. Let's open to the book of Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 <coughs> to 16. I'll read that. It said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Peter. Um, I, I want to ask a question based on this particular passage that we've read. A question is, what is this light that we're talking about here? Yes, this light actually represents goodness, uprightness, the God in us, the image of God, perfection, positive and whatsoever is honorable to the mentally sound. Mm. So, is it, is it possible? I mean, what could actually motivate someone to hide the light? Because from what I'm seeing here, they were asking the question, if it is possible that someone can light a lamp and put it under a uh, basket, yes. is it possible? What could motivate someone to hide a light? That's, for the man saying it here, it means that it's a possibility that exists. Why people will do it might not be the same, but I will call it foolishness. Mm. My people perish for lack of knowledge. So somebody who doesn't know the essence of light might as well light it and put it under a bushel, and that is foolishness. In that case, it doesn't qualify to be a light because it's not doing the job for which it's been made to do. Oh, that, that's, that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's nice. Yeah, but, as funny as it sounds. So what exactly is the point that Jesus is trying to make here? We need to know the point. Yeah, it's very clear that the essence of light is to dispel darkness. Without doing away with lightness, the quality of light is not realized. So light coming in means that darkness existed. And so if light comes in and then you're trying to hide it away from doing the job for which it's made, in that case, there's no point for it. It's an effort in futility. Mm -hmm. So, and you know that for light to come out, a lot of energy is either through combustion or generation, energy is dissipated. So if after all that, the light is not kept where it will do its job, that means that there's no point for it. So Jesus Christ is saying that light should be for the purpose of which it is. So I think another thing I would love to add there is that we should allow the goodness of God within us, you know, to produce good work so that God is glorified. Yeah, that's, that's what he's saying there, that the light we're talking about now represents goodness in us, the God in us. So if, for instance, we're a Christian and people are not seeing the light mm. because the world is grouping in the dark, 
And then we, Christian, in verse 14, he says, we are the light of the world. He's not saying that we are one of the lights of the world. So without us, the world, the rest of the world, will be groping in darkness. So we must be where, we must be positioned, the places that will have effect, our lights will have effect, and people who are walking in darkness will see the light and see the way. Uh, okay, so let's, let's move to the next point. That is, uh, I think here we're going to draw in two passages. We have Mark and okay. Luke. So from in the context found in Mark, I need you to help us read Mark chapter 4, verses okay. 21 to 25. Mark chapter 4, 21 to 25. Also he said to them, Is a lamb brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. I will read Luke. Okay. You know, we are taking it uh, from three different points. And uh, kind of, let's, I, try, I want us to merge Mark and Luke and together. Luke okay. So I will read Luke chapter 8, verse 16. It says, no one lights a lamp, the same message, okay. and hides it in a jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, he puts it on the stand so that those who come in can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has, will be taken from him. Now, I, I want to ask you, do, do you think there's anything hidden from God? I mean, that is what this whole place is saying. Do you think that there's anything at all hidden from God? No, 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 of course. He sees in secret and in the open. Nothing is hidden from him. But I think what is being inferred here is that whatever we call secret has a time frame. Okay. It will elapse. So the secrecy of that secret will end when the light comes up. So at the time that the light will show, every of those things that were hidden will be exposed. Maybe like Revelation said, there will be a judgment. Uh, after life, there is judgment. So whatever we have done in the secret, whatever it's there that you think nobody knows, God that knows the secret will expose everything even at the end of it. Um, and there's a comment that Jesus made in Luke chapter 8, yes. verse 18. Okay. Now, I, want, I don't know. That statement, what was Jesus referring to? Okay, therefore take heed what you hear. Yeah, I think it's connected to, to uh, the parable he talked about, the ten talents, that whoever has, more will be given. So if, if you're hearing now, if you have the light and you're not using it, it can be taken away from you. But he's saying, be careful what you hear. So as you listen, as you hear, you listen, you learn, you get more insight, you get brighter, your light shines brighter by what you hear because you're wise. You're not just listening for listening's sake. You're hearing the word. And then because you are the light of the world, it's like putting oil in the lamp to increase the intensity of the light. And when intensity is, is increased, the, the quantum of darkness that will be dispelled will, will be increased. So, He's saying, be careful what you, what you hear. So as you're hearing now and you're listening, you'll get it. But if you're just listening for listening's sake, and it will be an effort of fertility. You know, so it won't, it won't give you anything. It won't get any light in you. Mm. So there's no point giving you anything. Your light will either be dimmed or be quenched. How about where he said what you have will be taken away from you? That's what I'm saying. It will be quenched or it will be dimmed. <laughs> Quenching it means that the light will be taken away from you because you, you're just listening for listening's sake. You're not putting your mind there. You're not concentrating. So this addressing like Christianity. You know, you're hearing the word. The word, the Bible says that the entrance of the world gives light. You know, so it then light, it illuminates you. Mm. But if you're just there, you go to church. If you're just there, you're answering a Christian name like that. You find that a time will come because it said even the first might become the last. So the opportunity that you have lost, you are going to regret it. Because you're, you're just a salt that is saltless. Mm. So, and then you're fit for nothing else but to be trampled upon. 
I want us to move to the third point now so we could be able to, you know, summarize it all. Okay. The context in Luke. Okay. Luke 11, mm -hmm. 33 to 34. You help us read. Okay, Luke. Luke 11, 33 to 34. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand, that those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body is also full of darkness. So, in this situation, I, I need you to please do me a favor. Give us a clear exposition of what Jesus is talking about here. I mean, for a lay person out there, a lay man out there, what is the exposition behind this passage? Yeah, the eye. Uh, in physics, we are taught that you see an object when light from that object or reflected by that object gets to your eye. So the eye is the contact point for vision. So Jesus Christ is saying here that, you know, the lamp you have made is the source of this light. You know, like you said, these four uh, passages are all talking about this issue of light, light and the essence of light, the importance of light. Because like we have said, the world is filled with darkness. darkness. From the fall of man, there is so much darkness. The intense darkness that people are walking through. So you can see people doing terrible things. So now, he's saying that when you light this lamp, when you have this eye, the health of your eye, the word of God, the point of your vision, you know, how healthy it is, is will determine how uh, your vision will be. You know, so if you have this light, then you must make good use of it. You must position it in the right way. Mm. You're hearing the word of God and you're not living by the word of God. You are in trouble. You know, uh, in the book of James, he told us to let us not only be hearers, but doers also of the word. So because the light we are showing now is not only by saying, preaching, come and give your life to Christ and all that, by your actions, darkness is being dispelled. By your examples, darkness is being dispelled. So when he's saying that in verse, in verse 34, that the lamp of the body is the eye, and we have talked about lamp, that you position it on a lampstand. You don't just hide it anywhere. So, and then because the eye of the person, it's, it's a parable, yes. but we're trying to bring it now, even considering the literal meaning and then bringing it into the applied meaning, so that the eye on your head, you know, is what is helping you to see. If you're blind, you cannot see. Mm -hmm. And that is why the Bible says too that the letter of the word kill it, but the spirit gives life. So when you're looking, when you're studying, when you're reading, when you're hearing, and it's not making meaning to you, you're not applying wisdom to what you're hearing. You're not applying wisdom to what you're seeing. You're not recharging your lamp to be able to see. You will still be groping in darkness even when you claim to have a lamp. So, Getting these whole passages together, what should be or what is your interpretation of this parable? I've said it. Uh, it's very, very clear that because there is so much darkness, we are in this world as the light. We are the people that will give the way. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. And then we are his ambassadors. We are the ones people see and we are the gospel people are going to read. So by our words, by our lifestyles, by our appearance, by everything, the way we do our business, the way we carry our lives, you know, we are the light of the world. And then so, if we are the light of, like you asked at the beginning, if we are the light of the world and we are not where people will see us, we are not dispelling darkness, mm -hmm. we are the light in our bedrooms, we are the light in our houses, it's of no effect. So we should be positioned, ask me about politics, ask me about businesses out there, whatever we find ourselves doing, we should be the light. So Christians will be involved in politics. Christians will be involved in businesses. Mm -hmm. Christians will be involved in governance, civil service. Christians will be everywhere that matters in this world because without us, the rest will be in darkness. That's why he's saying that the essence of our being in this world is to show them the way, mm -hmm. is to show the light. And without, like I told you, if there is no darkness, uh, like if you go to the villages in the olden days, then you see people who put on, because we're not paying light bills very well then, you see people who put their security lights on, mm. and then in the afternoon the light is still on. 
But that light that they stay on in the afternoon is not, I mean, Nepal light, is not making any impact. But in the darkness, that singular bulb that you're seeing there will dispel so much darkness around, and the people will be able to see where they are going. They won't be groping in the dark. So he's telling us that our being light is not for us to hide in one place. It is for us to go and affect the dark world. That is the essence of this parable. Mm, thank you, sir. All yes. right, viewers, you just heard what he said. You have to be involved in everything. As a Christian, who knows that the light of God it's in you and you only have to come out to shine the light of God so that God himself will be glorified. You know, I want to go on a special commercial break. We'll be back. Just stay where you are. Don't go anywhere. Did you know Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? Did you know ACNN reaches out to all African, European and Asian countries? Did you know ACNN produces programs that provide Bible-based solutions to your everyday need? Would you consider partnering with us in order to help us reach out to more souls? Then, become a part of ACNN TV Kingdom Investment Partnership. You can be a monthly or a yearly partner. To subscribe, make your partnership payment into this Zenith Bank account. Account name, Prada Communications Limited. Account number, 10132675322. For more details and confirmation of your Akip subscription, please call plus 234-703-2656544. You can also reach us via email. we can reach the world with the undiluted Word of God. You are welcome back and thanks for being there. So far we've been talking with Brother James Waboke who has advocated that Christians should be in politics. They should be everywhere shining the light of God that has already been set inside of them by God. And um, moving on sir, please tell us how does this parable relates to the church. Now I want us to come to the church, to the society, an individual. You can actually use an experience. It will help. Uh, it's, it's a clear case where you have the individual, a group of individuals make the church. Yes. And then the church is embedded in the society. So now if Jeremiah chapter uh, 17 verse 9 says that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked who can know it. Mm. That means there is darkness flooding everywhere. But Psalms 119 verse 130 says that the entrance of the word of God gives light. Right. It illuminates. It, it's what helps us. Again, and so Jesus Christ has said to that, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. In John chapter 8 verse 12. You know, so if Every individual that make up the church, or majority of individuals that make up the church, let their lights so shine. And then in the church, they are positioned. First of all, you have to uh, dispel the darknesses within you. So by giving room for your strength, your areas of strength to shine, by not grieving the Holy Spirit, by not quenching the Holy Spirit. So by the time you're building your strength, you know, as the light, you're taking in oil, you're taking in anointing, you're taking in the word of God that will strengthen the power of the light within you. Mm. You see that as an individual, you disperse, you dispel this darkness. And then, so if the individuals who come together to form the church, the body of Christ, you know, have this light within the church, you begin to dispel the darkness that exists within the church. Because everywhere the children of God gather, even the devil sends his agents. The devil is present. Remember the case of Job. So if within the garden of the children of God, we are able to dispel the darkness that is, like Jesus Christ said, how do we do that? We take positions. We make sure that we are doing businesses that when it comes to funding for church projects, believers are funding church projects. We're not depending on people who live uh, in the dark to come and fund. So you now find out that the message is a kind of whittled down because of the effect of people who support the gospel. 
So, but if believers are taking positions, the lights are put on the lampstands. In the choir, we are the ones who sing. Uh, come to clean the church, we are the ones who come to clean the church. You know, in the PCC, we are the ones who are there, you know, to help the church to grow. You find out that the church will feel the impact of light. So the darkness within the church will be dispelled. And then, by extension, if the church in the society is filled with light, we speak and we, we act what we speak. You find out the society will have a lot of these avarice driven away. You see a lot of disgruntled elements running away. And then by so doing, in the civil service, you are not known for truancy, you are not known for late arrival to the office, and professionalism, integrity is not in question. The, the believer who works in an office is known. Even the unbelievers who seek us. I've heard of people who look for believers to come and man their finance departments. They are not believers. Mm. But when it comes to recruiting, they need real born again to be in charge of their monies. You know, so this is what I'm saying. So if people can know that this is the light and they see you, they know the difference is very clear. So it will affect the society. This is what Jesus Christ is talking about all this. You know, we should be the ones going there and then people will begin to see what is that that makes difference in your life. And then when they see that this thing is good, because for the mentally sound, everybody knows what is good. The mentally sound, they know what is good. It's just that many people choose the shortcuts, choose the wrong way. Mm. But Jesus Christ is saying that by so doing, inside you, you're doing away with darkness. The church is doing away with darkness. The society sees the church doing away with the darkness in society. So do you think that the church is doing enough, I mean, to help congregations, mm. people, uh, church members, actually, to build this light in them? Well, I have always told people that the issue of judging the church is left for the owner of the church. I start with that. You know, I can't say, because enough, that word enough is a big, uh, a big word. Uh, you have to be careful. If I'm judging my master's church, the household, like I'm judging the men of God like that, who am I? You know, but what, from what I see, I feel we can do more. Okay. So I feel we can do more. We, by, how do we do that? By prioritizing issues that concern evangelism, spiritual growth of your members. If you please emphasis, look at the church, the budget of churches. How many of them can you say specifically are tied to evangelism, preparing souls for Christ, winning souls. Check the percentage. There are many things that we can, by extension, say, yes, this is evangelism. Building a mansion, or building a wonderful apartment, buying a beautiful car, wonderful jet. Yes, those ones are one way or the other linked to evangelism. But the core evaluating how many souls have been won by this action, you know, how many churches these days are concentrating on the main, the great commission that Jesus Christ gave to us. In that case, I would have been tempted to say, I don't think the church is doing enough. But the church, like I said, is not building, is not denomination, is the body of Christ. So I cannot judge the body of Christ. <laughs> but I think we can do more. All right. So uh, there's something I want to ask you. Can you please help us identify those darkness that we are talking about? Okay. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, you know, says, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever, you know, so we know, like I said, for those that are not mentally uh, derailed or retarded, for every sound mind, there's this element, if you have not been given up to reprobate minds, mm. you know, there is this ability for conviction of the Holy Spirit. There is this conviction of every sound mind of what is good and what is evil. Yes, there are great levels, like you're saying, who might not know that what they're doing is wrong, like Saul on the way to Damascus. He was actually, you know, in quotes, working for God, going to go and capture all those who are turning the things upside down, who are walking again. So he took permission from the priests and the chief priests and was going there to go and arrest Christians when Christ arrested him. Yeah, but basically saying, there are many things on earth. If you have to, as a Christian, you have to come in to work and, for instance, sign in, you arrived at 8 o'clock, when number one, you know that you arrived a minute after eight. It is a lie. So no matter where you take it, you know you have lied. And then if one way or the other, you go to do swear and affidavit that you are uh, 20 years, when you know you are 25 years, it's a lie. Lie by whatever guys, in whatever name, whatever you used to cover it. Lie is one very great darkness. Mm. You see that 
a home where there is clear communication. A man comes home and tells the wife, you know, everything uh, he has done today, just uh, without hiding anything. Like, and the wife is always talking, when there is money, you let know how much I have, you let, you know. So when there is no lie and everything is done transparently, and that is why you see governments are talking about transparency. As far as things are not shrouded in secrecy, there is an element of positive move. So when there is a kind of hiding things, doing things under the table, mm. it's a, a great darkness. So moving from there, uh, even when they say give, because Jesus Christ, I, I always tell them about this issue of tithing and all that, you know, that we shouldn't be talking, we shouldn't be debating issue of tithe these days. Because all we have should be given to the Lord. Everything he's able to take care of us. You know, so darkness is in holding the one that, that is knowing this one is my own. And then you see people in some churches going to make change. Uh, there's an amount you need to give in church. But when they call you for political party donations or things like that, there's an amount you give to political parties or uh, society meetings and all that. But when it comes to church, you're being careful. That is darkness. People are not freely, you know, worshipping God with all they have, with themselves and their substance. That is darkness. Mm. Because if you now see that people worship God freely from their heart in spirit and in truth, in that case, you see that we hear the Lord speak to us and we obey totally. But in society, generally, darkness, you see people uh, doing shady things, you see people selling things, they will tell you, uh, I understand even the measures they used to sell food stuff. Mm -hmm. We have the ones that are original, we have the ones that are fake. <laughs> we have uh, drugs that are fake, we have original like that. So many things. There are drivers who used to drive you around, then when we were using meter for transportation. So there is so much darkness everywhere. Any form of sin, any form of things that are dishonorable is darkness. So I want to ask you a personal question and then you, you answer that and advise the people who are watching, viewers who are watching. I want to ask you how the revelation of truth has affected your own behavior. You know, the word of God is truth. Jesus Christ says, sanctify them by the truth. The word, thy word is the truth. But it, since I realized that God is almighty, mm -hmm. he's able to meet all my needs. I have some farms here and there. And I will labor, prepare the grounds, pay the workers, do so many things like that. And then when my maize will mature, before you know, without any signal, you see birds come to feed from the corn that I've labored and planted. So I remember what Jesus Christ said, that why will you care, put worries on yourself? Why will you, why don't you know your father clothes the lilies of the valley? Like even Solomon in his array with all his wealth, is not as clothed as these lilies. So the birds of the air, they do not labor, they do not toil, they don't even stock for tomorrow. But they are able to come and eat from my farm, come and eat from other farms and things like that. So I realized that God is able to take care of all my needs. It's a revelation of the truth. In that case, I won't go out of my way to do whatever will displease God, to meet my need, or to get promotion, mm. or to pass exam, or to get money or to get fame, or to get power. God is able to meet all my needs. And so far, for me, he has surpassed all my expectations in my life. The wonderful wife he gave me, the excellent children he gave me, wow. the family he puts me in. This God is awesome. So if you get a revelation of this truth, you see that you don't need to go and do terrible things to get there. Mm. Because you see that God is there waiting for you. He's able to do more than you can even imagine. Wow. You don't need to worry yourself. Worship him in spirit and in truth. And you'll see he will surprise you. Ah, you've all heard it. And I want to summarize by saying that Christianity is reflected by living in a way that reveals the love, hope and promises of God. Living a life that por portrays these values will correctly present the light of Jesus. It can sometimes be uncomfortable when our lights glow in the midst of this darkness. Mm. Yet, as the moon reflects the light of the sun, so are we to reflect the light of Jesus. Our light is to serve as a beacon for others. Great encouragement is given to those who prove themselves to be faithful hearers of the word by being doers of the work. If we want what God gives, it will increase, but the opposite is also true. If we don't use what God gives, there will be a spiritual loss. 
we will lose even what we think we have. And so that is where we're going to draw the curtain on this edition of the program. We, we want to appreciate you, sir, brother James Mwabuke, Thank for coming. So and Thank we so hope much. that next time we will call you, you will come. It's my pleasure. Honestly. All right. And to our viewers, we invite you to please join us. Same time, same station for another wonderful exclusive edition. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. I am Uzubrechi Frank, and thanks for watching.